Purple Cow. If you saw that, you'd be like, what? But Seth Godin, best-selling author of Purple Cow, says that your marketing needs to be more like a purple cow. In this video, I'll explain what the heck that means and share five marketing lessons from this book. First is that your marketing needs to be remarkable or risk being ignored. Quick quiz, what does Folgers, Pampers, and Old Spice have in common? You can say it's a man baby that likes to smell good and likes coffee. No, they actually all grew through one marketing flywheel, through ads. Way back then, the way that they grew was the marketers would buy more ads in newspaper, TV, and magazine. It leads to more sales and distribution, and that sales leads to higher demand, which results in higher prices and more profit. Of course, this flywheel is so effective way back then that a lot of products grew through this flywheel. Think about it like cereal, banks, and even politicians like Ronald Reagan. But like anything effective, marketers ruin them. We're now bombarded with ads, TVs, websites, newspaper, radio, and even in bathrooms, you see ads while you're taking a pee. That's why people now ignore most ads because we're too distracted and we're too busy to even care if a marketing doesn't really speak to our needs and solve a specific problem that we have. The point of this is that traditional advertising has lost its power, according to Seth Godin. That's why you need remarkable marketing, or as he calls it, a purple cow. Get it? Purple cow. Remarkable marketing or purple cow is about building things into your product or service that's worth noticing and actually getting people to tell others about it. Classic example of this is the Volkswagen Beetle. Because of its unique shape and attractive colors, it stands out from boxy SUVs and cars that are on the streets. Now, great reviews and even word of mouth are really responsible for Beetle's success. This leads us to the second lesson, marketing that spreads wins. Now, Seth Golden calls this, I love this, idea of viruses. And those that spread it, he calls them sneezers. Get it? They're spreading the virus. <laughs> probably too soon with the pandemic. <laughs> often sneezers are the ones who are willing to try out and embrace something new. That's why they're often called early adopters because they adopt the product before anyone else. The problem with traditional marketing is that they focus on too many people at once. They try to target the masses. The problem with this is first of all, it's super expensive. Second, it's ineffective because you're likely to dumb down your message to try to target everybody. And as the saying goes, if you target everyone, you get no one. Seth Godin suggests that you don't pursue everyone, but you focus on a niche. By doing that, people are more likely to listen to what you have to say and are more willing to tell others, like their colleagues, friends, and admirers all about your product. An example that Seth Godin brings up in his book is with digital cameras, like this. Instead of trying to target everybody or even all photographers, you target the ones that are technology enthusiasts who are also professional photographers. Now, it might sound kind of intuitive because that's probably not a big market, but they're more likely to appreciate your product's benefits and tell others about the digital camera, how small and convenient and effective it is. These people are your <laughs> sneezers who will spread your product. Can't really sneeze that. The lesson for marketers here is to target a niche of your product who are more likely to spread it to others and make it easy for them to do so. Talking about making it easy, if you want to power up your marketing and make it easier for you to hit your goals and wow your colleagues, subscribe to my weekly newsletter, Marketing Power Ups. Each week, I share the secrets, lessons, and techniques of high-performing marketers so that you can do the same. You can go to marketingpowerups.com right now and instantly unlock the three best power ups to you. Now, let's go to the third lesson, which is to make your product easy to talk about with others. Seth Golden actually suggests that you have a slogan, something that's super easy to remember that people can tell their friends, colleagues, and their admirers. Remember that sneezers want to tell others about this. And by having a slogan, you make it super easy for them to do so. An example of this is the Leaning Tower of Pisa. And guess what? Surprise, surprise. It's uh, leaning and it's a tower. There's no also, there's no but, there's no extra features about it. It is literally a leaning tower in the middle of a lawn in the city of Pisa in Italy. The lesson here for marketers is to have a slogan or positioning statement that sneezers can boast about your product. 
Hey, before I share the last two lessons from this book, if you enjoyed this so far, make sure to smash that subscribe button and hit that bell icon and Seth Golden will thank you for it. You'll also get videos that will power up your market. The fourth lesson is that marketing is about co-creating the product, not just about advertising. And when people think about marketing, they think about it's, it's about communicating the value of the product that's already been. Now, Seth Godin argues in the book that marketing is about co-creating and inventing the product. For Purple Cows, it's not business as usual, where engineering is inventing, manufacturing is building, marketing is doing its marketing thing, and sales is doing a sales thing. It doesn't work in a world where product attributes like the Beatles car shape or the digital cameras unique capabilities are at the heart of making marketing succeed. Things like design, production, pricing, and sales are factors that influences marketing consideration. And a great example of this is the CEO of airline of JetBlue asked the head of marketing to be involved in the product design and employee training from the start. As a result, their local structure, underused airports, and young non-union staff give them an unfair advantage over American Airlines or United Airlines. The lesson here for marketers is to take courses that is outside of the topic of marketing. Having non-marketing related knowledge can help you work with team members and create remarkable market. And finally, the fifth lesson here is being remarkable brings risk, but it also brings huge rewards. Now, one of the safest things you can do is follow a leader. It's a safe bet. They've already mapped out the path for you to take that leads to success. Problem with this strategy is you'll never ever be a leader because of this. If you're marketing a product is not remarkable like a purple cow, it's forgotten or ignored. Whereas it results in lackluster sales like Buick. Look at this, it's a boring car. The manufacturer has obviously opted not to take any risk at all with the design. So when you put it beside other cars, it doesn't stand out, it's like easily forgotten. As a result, it hasn't really sold very well. Now compare this with a CTS Cadillac. Like, ooh, ah. I mean, people will say it's ugly, but they've definitely taken some risk with the design. Of it. And it sold really well. And those who bought it actually love it and tell others about it. The lesson here for marketers is to think about ways to make your marketing stand out like a purple cow. It's how you'll cut through the noise. When your marketing stands out, people are more likely to tell their friends about it. And that's what the point of it with this ad abundant era. Now, if you want to learn how to make your marketing stand out based on human behavior psychology, the video is right there or in the description of the show. I'll be sharing the six F's of creating marketing and content that makes people stop and pay attention to what you have to say and buy your product. Hope that's interesting to you. I'll see you there.